Hi guys, this is Charles. I'm one of the servants at South Paws. Um, this afternoon, we are doing a total ear canal ablation on a dog that has this big polypoid hyperplastic mass in the ear canal. Um, incidentally, if we look down here, we can see that the dog has had a, a TICA, or I'm sorry, a ZEPS procedure previously. So a, um, a lateral ear resection. Um, and so we're gonna revise this and, and do a complete total ear canal ablation. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. And if um, you already subscribed, make sure you turn on notifications so that you'll get a little ding on your phone when we are live streaming. So um, I'm just going to mark out, I think. Can I get a Sharpie, please? I'm going to mark out my intended um, excision. Okay, so I'm going to take out my drain board from the ZEPS procedure, come up here. I'm going to remove all of this hyperplastic tissue coming around the top here. And the side here, and then back down. Um, we do have the live chat going, so if you have any questions, you can ask, and I'll try to answer them when I can get to them. And go ahead and get started. So coming around, just pull up on that for me, please. I can't emphasize enough how much it helps to have tension on the tissues um, as far as the ease of cutting. Can I get cautery plugged in, please? Let me just try to center the image a little bit. I can zoom in. There we go. Okay, so. Now, as I've said before, uh, staying right on the cartilage, the auricular cartilage of the ear canal is the best way to avoid the facial nerve. So just have you retract back here. And for those of you that have just joined us, this is a total ear canal ablation in a, cock, or in a West Highland White Terrier that has this big polypoid hyperplastic tissue mass in the middle of the ear canal. All right, so now we'll try to come up over the top here. You want to try to excise as much of the polypoid tissue as you can. Pull that back up here. 
Thank you. Can I um, get you guys to see if you can find a remote control for the Canon in one of those drawers? Try the top drawer first. And it's just a little black remote control. Uh, no, it doesn't have a wire on it. So it might be there, it might be... No. Nah. Uh, try that, point that at the, at here and then do wide, the W. No, I got another one in there somewhere. It should say Canon on it. For me, please. That's the one, and then just go wide. So, yeah, a little bit more. Yep, and we'll pull that up there. Great, thank you. Um, so, this has there's a question about whether it's um, been biopsied in the past, and it, it has been biopsied, and it came back just polypoid hyperplastic inflammation. And the beginning of this surgery is actually the trickiest when you're trying to establish that plane of dissection around the ear canal, around the external opening of the ear canal. I find that to be really tricky. And it is possible that we would get pinna uh, necrosis here from lack of blood supply um, because the blood vessels run rostrally and caudally. But we've got a third one that runs in the middle, so hopefully that will be enough to maintain blood supply. All right, so let's get another towel clamp here. So just track on that. Can I get quarter turned down to 20, please? Um, the question is, is removal curative? The answer to that is um, it'll be curative of the clinical signs, which um, are related to obstruction of the the ear canal, we may have still some hyperplastic tissue there, but it's not going to be causing any clinical signs because there won't be any ear canal left. So, scalpel blade here. I 
I'm happy to use cautery until I get to the angle of the demarcation between the vertical and horizontal ear canals. And then I'm going to switch just to sharp and blunt dissection and no electrocautery. The reason why I do that is because I'm getting closer to the facial nerve. And so I'm going to obviously try to avoid that. And it adds another, well, we've got two things adding to the difficulty here. One is the presence of the tumor. The other is the fact that it's had the Zets procedure done previously. Gelpia retractor in here. Remember that the drain board with a Zeps procedure, the lateral ear section, is very superficial, so I don't have to go very deep around that. Now it's getting more and more important that I stay right on the auricular cartilage here. And that's, again, in order to avoid the facial nerve. I'm cutting through parotid salivary gland here, which doesn't cause any problem. And I can see twitching down here, so it means that I'm getting probably closer to the facial nerve. And I, I would not attempt this without an assistant. So now I'm being really careful trying to dissect down onto the auricular cartilage. Uh. 
Okay, so we're getting down to the vertical ear canal here. Amputate that bit of skin eventually, which is the drain board, because it's obstructing my view. hard to find that nice planar dissection that you get with a normal total ear canal ablation that has not had a ZEPS procedure previously. I might uh, re-grab some skin down here and then just pull up like that. So that's getting through the auricular cartilage, which is not what I want here. Just like this. Bleeder down here. So you can see the ear canal heading down right there. I assume that you guys can see that right there. Maybe we'll move this up a little bit here. I'm happy with that exposure that I have dorsally. And staying right on that auricular cartilage again is the key in trying to avoid that facial nerve. And the facial nerve could be right in the middle of this stuff right here and you wouldn't, and you wouldn't know it. There's some discharge coming out right here. So I've gone into the lumen of the ear canal, which is not a not a big deal. It's nice to stay out of it if you can. I think that may be a branch of the facial nerve right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's just a little white thing right there. You have to be careful with how deep you put in your gelpies so you avoid damaging the facial nerve. Okay, I can see another big branch of the facial nerve right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Heading right into that stylonastoid foramen. Not much fun, this surgery. There's more schmoo coming out there. We can suction that up. And that we're getting to the. Oh, can we um, can we zoom in with the? Yeah. I got a new clamp for the cameras. Just came in the mail today, which is allowing me to 
have the camera right over the surgery field. Can you see the, does that say Canon on it? Yeah, so do zoom a little bit. There's a question, is the animal still sleeping? Um, yes, <laughs> it's deep under anesthetic. Yeah, um, so, and then there's a question, is there a known cause of these tumors? And I think it's kind of a chicken or the egg kind of thing where you have inflammation, which causes hyperplasia. And then when you have hyperplasia, you have obstruction of the ear canal. You have obstruction of the ear canal, you have more um, inflammation, which means that you have more hyperplasia. So it's um, a bit of a vicious cycle. Cocker spaniels obviously are known for their ear canal disease. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys can see that ear canal right there. And there's exudate coming out of the ear canal right there. So I can palpate the bulla, the tympanic bulla right there. So, and I can see my facial nerve right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's the facial nerve sitting there. So I'm happy to go ahead and transect the ear canal. And this is the scariest part of the surgery because you always worry about picking off the facial nerve. And while it's not ideal to cut the facial nerve, it does happen occasionally. And it is not catastrophic, particularly in dogs that are dolicocephalic, meaning that they don't have... So if you, that happened in a pug, you'd be more concerned. So that's the ear canal that we've taken out there. Um, you can see that it's totally abnormal anatomy um, that we're looking at. So you get the suction right down in the ear canal down here and into the tympanic bulla. And that's facial nerve sitting right there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is use a freer elevator and just dissect ventral to the tympanic bulla. So I've got that bulla exposed ventrally down here. Okay, so now I've got that freer elevator ventral to the bulla. Um, there's a question, what breed of dog is this? It's a West Highland White Terrier, um, which also has a reputation for having at least skin problems, if not ear canal problems. So I'm right here, I'm ventral to the bulla. And now that I, I've got that exposed ventrally, facial nerve is sitting right there. I can stick a rongeur. Can I get a medium-sized rongeur? So a, a ruskin that's smaller than this. Thank you. And we'll pull that up a little bit. Can you zoom in a bit more? So just point it up at this. Yeah. Other way. Other zoom. Okay, that's great. All right, so now we can see the facial nerve right here, and that's the inside of the tympanic bulla right there. Uh, either one of those. Great, thank you. See how close that facial nerve is to the, um, to the opening of the ear canal? So facial nerve is right there coming out of the stylomastoid foramen, and the ear canal is just sitting right in there. So that is bloody close. All right, so now I can stick... My rongeurs, I'm just taking out a bit of residual ear canal that I didn't take out with my osteotomy and I mean uh, with my excision, total ear canal ablation. And now I've got a, a blade of the rongeur in the tympanic bulla. And there is a blood vessel here, which is a branch of the carotid artery. I don't think I got it, but um, they can bleed significantly if you do get that.
taking the whole floor out of the tympanic bulla. And if you leave any of the, or too much of the bulla, you're going to leave some secretory tissue in there, which means that you're going to get draining tracts formed down the road. And so I really take my time making sure I'm getting, number one, getting out enough of the tympanic bulla, and also that I'm getting all of the secretory material out. Can I get my loops, please? Thank you. So I'm just switching over to my loops. And just watch that facial nerve. Thank you. And my loops are going to let me have a really good look down into the bulla. And it hopefully is going to increase the lighting for you guys to see as well. So can you guys see the white at the bottom of the bulla there? Can you guys see that white? Okay. So when I look down here, you guys can see white down there? Okay. Um, so I'm just going to come over to my hemostats and just start pulling out secretory epithelium. This is awesome. Look at that. Nice big chunk all at one time. So we had a question internally as to what happens if you do a TICA without a bull osteotomy. The answer is that you leave all that secretory tissue in there and then you're going to get draining tracts that are going to form down the road. Um, you're going to get draining tracts form because you're leaving secretory tissue without any way for it to exit. Does that answer your question? Um, so when you're going through a previous surgery site, it's always tricky because the anatomy is going to be disrupted and it's harder to find landmarks to allow you to protect the facial nerve. We were lucky here um, that we were able to protect it well. Um, but that certainly adds a extra layer of difficulty to the procedure. Now I'm really going to take my time here to try to identify any more secretory material, remembering that we have to avoid the dorsal region because that's where the vestibular apparatus, vestibular apparatus is. And if you damage the vestibular, vestibular apparatus with this surgery, these guys are just miserable for a long time and they'll have a head tilt for the rest of their lives. So every time they come in to see you, you're going to be reminded of how you damage that vestibular apparatus. So I'm just really, really careful to avoid going dorsally um, uh, once I get inside the bullet. There's a big chunk of secretory material there that I'm taking out. There's actually quite a bit down there. So I use a, a neuro kit when I'm operating on these because I've got a nice curette and picks and things like that. And so that's going to allow me the best opportunity to get a lot of this secretory crap out of here. Is there any benefit to leaving the pinna? To leaving the pinna? Yes. Um, that's a good question. Um, 
the reason, I mean, the really the only reason to leave the pinna is cosmetics. Uh, and it is a bit of a, um, it's a bit hard for people to see their dogs without their ears, their pinnas, because the pinna, just like the eyes, are responsible for a lot of facial expression and personality. And so people do struggle to, um, to cope with you removing the, uh, the pinna. And I'm just flushing that out really, really well. Janine, can you guys see the inside of the bullet there, that white bone, when I use my loops down there? So where the suction is, can you see white? Uh, yeah. Yep, right. How about now? Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. We'll go ahead and zoom out again. I'll get some mepivacaine. So we've preserved our facial nerve. We've gotten all the, the lining of the bulla out. And so we'll just do a local block with mepivacaine and then I'll be happy to close. I'll just close. Uh, this dog has had multiple cultures in the past, so I won't, um, if there's any question, um, it certainly is not a bad idea to do a culture. There's a big branch of the facial nerve right there, right next to what I'm about to cauterize. I'm just waiting now for my mepivacaine. And I just do a splash block on these guys, which means that I just squirt mepivacaine topically. And then I'll get some 3O PDS, please. Where's that bleeding coming from? Thank you. See how this is going to come together best. I have had one animal necrose its pinnas. Um, and that was a diabetic cat, so I assume that it had a peripheral uh, vasculopathy. And I don't drain these. I'm sure you guys could have guessed based on all of my previous live streams, but there's no benefit to draining these. There was a study that was done by Chad Devitt, Colorado State, that um, showed that the only thing that happens when you drain them is that they end up being hospitalized longer. There's no difference in the incidence of infection.
So we'll get a new section hose, new cautery tip. What's that? Okay, I think that Ray may have found him. So that was a bit more challenging than a lot of them. Hopefully the other side. I am doing the other side, but I won't live stream it. Um, hopefully the other side will be easier. I'm going to try to make this into a bit of a T-shaped incision so that the appearance of the penna is more normal. Um, I think that's not a bad idea. So um, that is uh, a soaker catheter, uh, and we use them a lot more in maxillofacial, like maxillectomies, mandibulectomies, stuff like that. But I don't think that it would be a bad idea to do it in um, in this situation. It's done a lot more commonly in people, um, but I think it. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, so the question, will it have vestibular signs? And I hope not. <laughs> so I have not, uh, I have stayed away from the dorsal aspect of the bulla and hopefully that's uh, prevented me from damaging the vestibular apparatus. Can I get something, do we have something on a cutting needle, maybe um, monosin, 2 or monosin? Uh, the tympanic bulla is removed, and it is, so there's a question, in Tika surgery, the tympanic bulla is removed, and is that important? And it's absolutely critical 
Um, you, you cannot do a Tika without doing a bull osteotomy. Um, otherwise, you will have um, really severe draining tracts develop and stuff. So uh, that is a, a absolutely critical part of the procedure. I'm going to trim away this extra little tag of skin. Do you have the nuts and bones? Thank you. And the vertical part of my T incision is longer than normal because it had had the ZEPS procedure previously. So otherwise it would have come only down to about here. And if it hadn't had a ZEPS procedure previously, I'd be finished already.
No worries, Ellen. How are things in Costa Rica? How's the weather? I bet it's nicer than here. And on this layer, my intradermal layer includes the cartilage as well. So often you'll have a little bit of cartilage sticking out through the incision and it can get a little bit dried out or necrotic. Um, and that does re-epithelialize with time. What time is it here? So it must be about midnight in Costa Rica, if not 1 a.m. We're getting to the finishing touches on this surgery. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and do so. Make sure you turn on notifications. So when we live stream again, you'll get a ding on your phone. And if you know of anybody else who might find this interesting, go ahead and send them a link. And I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream now. And I probably won't live stream any surgeries again this week because I have an admin day tomorrow, um, but I will be back at it next week. So thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Go ahead and end the live stream.